up guys and gals my name is Colin or separate as some of you may know me um, pretty much what I'm showing you today is I'm gonna be showing you guys the basics of Adobe After Effects um, I recommend that you guys use CC because it's the newest version um, they've updated a lot of stuff put a lot of new stuff in I'm I'm gonna be using CS6 for this um, it's not gonna matter too much I mean you can even use CS4 it's still gonna look the same it pretty much has the same layout and standard um, you can change your workplace but um, for this video we're gonna leave it on standard so pretty much what I'm showing you is um, what you're gonna be looking at when you first open up the program and I'm gonna pretty much show you what to start like how to start your video and you know working your way around the program because I know when you open up this program you know you're gonna see it and you're gonna go I have no idea what I'm doing and you know it kind of overwhelms people because there's a lot of stuff to this program and you know it's a very useful program in many ways where you can do a lot of special effects with it um, it also works good if you're doing like mini videos you know stuff like that little documentaries and stuff like that but um, for this one for this program it's usually used for special effects um, and that's pretty much it but um, this program is very useful it's going to benefit you in many ways and um, I feel like it's a really good program to start out on because once you learn this product you know this um, program here you're really gonna get to know a lot of um, like uh, Adobe products because a lot of them are the same and they have the same render engine and the same features usually so um, yeah I'm gonna get right into it and just showing out the home screen and what everything does so this top left corner here in this box area here where it's highlighted this is your project panel so this is where you're going to be importing all your videos um, and your sound your say your music or your voice files and your um, your actual videos themselves so this is where you're going to want to import that this is also where you're going to want to start your new composition and you can build folders and pre-comps off of this um, I'm going to tell you guys about pre-comps in a later tutorial and um, and stuff like that. This is mostly just going to run over the stuff for you. Um, also, right next to it in the same box area, you have effects, uh, effect control. So, the effect control is where you're going to see your effects that when you drag your effects from here or from here, if you would like, um, they're going to pop up over here, and this is where you can edit them. You also can edit them down here, but I recommend you do it up here unless you're doing graph editor or you're editing your key points. So I'd, right up here is where you're going to want to usually edit your numbers and you know put your settings to where you want them to be. So that's pretty much it for that. So your middle big box here, this is where your video and your preview is going to show up. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. You have options on here also. Um, I'll go over these a little bit later in the end of the video when I pull a video up. but. Um, other than that, I'm just going to show you guys the rest of this. Um, your info, you don't really use this too much. You usually only use the audio, and you usually use the audio just to make sure that you're not red barring because you really do not want to redline this because your audio will distort. Um, and I'll teach you guys more about that also in the future. But um, you really want to make sure that you're not redlining, guys, because that's really bad. Um, right below it here, you have your preview. So I know a lot of people when they start editing and they want to check out what's going on, they hit the play button to see what they're doing. Uh, do not do that. You're going to wonder why you're not hearing audio and why you're only seeing choppy video. It's because you hit the play button. When you are doing something and you want to see how it's coming out, you want to use the RAM preview button. That's going to show you what your video is looking like in real time. Now, unless you have a rather nice computer, I recommend like 8 gigabytes of RAM or higher in order to run a really good RAM preview, or else it's going to go really slow. If you don't have that good of a computer, I recommend changing your quality, which is right here. It's at full. Uh, you just click the drop down and it give you quarter, the options of quarter, third, half, and full. I recommend you do quarter if you have a really, really slow computer half if you have a rather decent and full if you're running really high RAM. See I'm only running 8 on mine so I usually run it about half because I usually don't need to see what my full quality video looks like unless I finish it first. So that's pretty much what this middle panel does. Um, this bottom left panel, this is where your source files will show up when you drag them into your timeline. 
So this pretty much whole bottom bar is your timeline. Your um your video and audio files will show up here with the names, and over here you'll see a bar. And I know the bar confuses a lot of people because if you use something like Movie Maker or Sony Vegas, it looks a lot different than this program. So um, I'll show you that also a little later when we import a video and I start showing you a little bit about that. Um, in your bottom right, this is where your text and you know your alignment is. Um, you know you really want to make sure that your videos are nicely aligned. That's one thing that like say you're doing a you know a comp like a competition for editing or design you're gonna realize that alignment is very important for design concept because it really keeps things organized and it keeps the flow really intact so I recommend keeping good alignment with that guys so yeah um, up in the top you have all of your uh, bar options up here you see these in most every program you're gonna have if you're having Mac, you will also have this. Uh, it's different looking. And that's another thing, guys. Mac is pretty much the same thing, except the keyboard shortcuts are a little bit different. And um, if you guys don't know the shortcuts, you know, I'm going to be using different shortcuts than you guys. I have used Macs, and I'll tell you the some of the shortcuts for those. Um, but if you have any like shortcuts that you also want to learn, I would go on the Adobe website to figure those out. I don't use it that much. I usually use my PC. But anyways, that's pretty much the layout, guys. I'm going to start importing stuff to show you guys the more basic stuff because I know when I first imported stuff, it got really confusing. And I didn't know what people were telling me, like, you got to set keyframes. I didn't even know what keyframes were. So I'm going to also show you that real quick. So right over here where you, is where you're going to want to import. You can also go file, import, you can open. I usually just go over here because it's just a quick way to do it. Um, so you can just go ahead and hit import file and I'm just gonna go to my editing file here and I'm just gonna grab something um, you guys will most likely be using this for either Call of Duty or you know video games or real life um, I'm mostly just gonna show you a simple video here let me just do my speed art that I did so I'm just gonna go ahead and import that so once you select your file you want to go and want to you're going to want to go ahead and select it and hit open so now you see you got your file here um, I don't know why it was down there but it's up here now it's usually will be up here so um I have my file up here and now you say well nothing showing up in the composition box over here and your your video is not showing it's because you have you don't have a composition yet your file is imported but it's just in the uh, media browser so you want to go ahead and you're going to want to click this and you're going to want to drag it to this little artboard here because this is where your composition is. When you click and drag it to this, it'll make a composition based off the settings that you recorded that video with. So now that your video is in here, you can see that um, the video is up here and you can see it here. Um, as you can see, it's on full. If you have a not that good of a computer, you can hit quarter quality, you see it distorts the quality but you can ramp preview it quicker that way. I'm just going to go ahead and put that to full. So as you can see guys, right here, I have the name of the file here, over here to the left. Now, this is where you're going to also have options, like your drop down and you're going to be able to edit, stuff like that. You have preset effects on every single um, file that you have. They already have some preset effects that you just have to like, edit yourself. But there's more over here that you can also play around with if you want to. So, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about keyframing. So, oh yeah, also guys, this is the bar right here I was telling you about. People don't really understand what that is. That's just your video um, thing. Like, it's just an easy way to keep track of your videos instead of having audio files underneath it and everything. It just compacts it all into one. That way it looks easier for you. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much that. So, to get started off with keyframes, um, there's keyboard shortcuts you can use, but for now we're just going to hit this arrow drop down right here. See, this is these are the preset um, th um, effects that you can use on the file itself. You have transform and you have audio. Audio is if you just want to edit the audio. Um, you have the waveform, so you can see like you can see what the uh, audio looks like. Um, that's just the audio waveform. And this right here, this is actually an effect to say if you wanted to like your audio to fade in 
but you can already see in the waveform I already have a fade in on this video. So that's pretty much that. I'll show you how to do that after. Transform is your actual video effects that affects the look of the video. I also already have a fade in here, but I'm gonna do one just for the purpose of this video so I can show you guys what it will look like. So here's the preset effects that are on the file for editing the actual video and picture of the video. So you have your anchor point. You won't really be using that too much. That's mostly just this right here. Um, you also have your position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Position is the way your like video will move left, right, up, and down. Uh, your scale is the size of the video. Obviously, you guys probably know that. You know, it makes it bigger, it makes it smaller, so on and so forth. It's gonna control Z that. Your rotation is the way your video will be like. Say if you wanted it to turn a little bit, it's gonna look weird right now, but that's that's just the rotation for you. Um, so that's what the rotation is. Oopsies. Let me get that back up for you guys. So yeah, that's that. I'm gonna show you keyframes now. This stopwatch right here is actually your keyframe. Don't let that confuse you. So this is actually where you're gonna wanna go if you wanna make a keyframe. But this is where I got confused. I used to think that I had to set one of these stopwatches every time I meet a keyframe. So let's say I just wanted this to be zero for scale. And then say I come over here to about 10 seconds and say I wanted it to be 100 here. See, I used to think, oh wait, I just changed that uh, the uh, thing there, so I need to set another keyframe. So I used to click that, but wait, my keyframes are gone now. So one th nice thing about After Effects is it'll automatically make keyframes when you make a difference in the video. So if you wanted like zero here, it'll automatically make a new keyframe for you. Um, that's pretty much the basics of keyframes, guys. It'll like make see if you can see it, it makes the scale bigger like that that's the nice thing about keyframes it really uh, phase it out for you and you know makes nice transitions so that's pretty much how keyframes work um, I'll teach you more about keyframes later on in tutorials because um, they actually do get a little complex at times because there's more you can do with graph editor and you can even edit the uh, auto keyframes so that's pretty much that um, so Audio is the same thing. You have the keyframe. You can make it fade in with the audio, make it louder, and stuff like that. So that's pretty much that. So say you wanted to add a video effect on here, you would come over to your effects panel, and you can just go down to like perspective. I also have a lot of aftermarket plugins for mine, guys, like my color corrections and my slow motion twixter. You guys will also see some of that in the near future. I'll show you some settings and how to get those downloaded onto your computer. <clears throat> but other than that, that's pretty much it for understanding After Effects. You do also have your toolbar up here. I don't use it too, too much. I do use it sometimes. I don't usually use the zoom tool because it has a zoom over here. I usually keep it on fit. Say you uh, scroll your thing on accident and you're all the way out here. You can just go here and you can go to fit and I'll bring it back up for you. Um, and that's pretty much that. Like I said, you have your uh, resolution here. <clears throat> Sorry about that guys, my voice was kind of getting lost there. But anyways, that's pretty much that for this here. I mean, you have your pen tool like any other Adobe product. You got your shape tools, your text tool, your brush tool, stamp tool. It pretty much is like a Photoshop and a video, video editing software. Which is really cool, guys, because, you know, if you thought Photoshop could do a lot, video editing can do almost just as much, and it's very cool, guys. Once you really get into it, you'll really start liking editing. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things to do, along with graphics. Um, but that's pretty much that. I'll show you more of the tools and more keyframing and effects later on in more tutorials. I'll show you how to do cool stuff like that. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much this video, guys. Stay tuned for more tutorials. I'll be doing some on Photoshop next time to show you the basics of that, just like I did with this one. Because I know these videos can, you know, really help people out because understanding these programs when you first open them can be very confusing. It looks very complex, and it's just very hard to understand. And I can understand that from your guys' perspective because that's how I did when I first started. 
I never took classes when I first started doing this. <clears throat> I kind of just went right into it and just, you know, got the program, opened it right up, and then I just looked at it and I was like, I can't do this. But, you know, once you start learning from what you just obviously did and just look it up on YouTube, you will find so much on YouTube, guys. This is where I learned how to do all my stuff. And, you know, it's very helpful. And I hope this was a big help to you guys. I know that I had a big help from people on YouTube when I first started out. So I hope this one really helped you guys out. Um, I'm always proud to answer questions down in the comment section below. Please drop a like and subscribe on this video, guys. It really helps me out and support knowing that I am helping you guys out with this stuff. So if you like the video, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I will always answer messages if you guys have questions. So just don't be afraid to just comment down below asking questions. I will always respond, guys. So <clears throat> other than that, it's your boy Separized or Colin. Uh, have a great day, everybody. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Show me the money like my name is Cuba Gooding. It ain't fool's gold, it's gold, fool. Can't stop, won't stop keeping it old school. Stop.